Good evening. Good evening, everybody. We're early or late. It depends on what you think is happening tonight. Yeah, there was a miss. Um, good evening. Biscotti and bourbon. That sounds like a good combination, biscotti and bourbon. I know. I like it. It's good to dunk the biscotti in the bourbon. It soaks up. If I had some right now, it would be even better. Oh, it would be. Anyway. Uh -huh. All right. So, two G's. Oh, on. look at us doing the thing. Good evening, everybody. Well, one of us is. I wish my fireplace was working because I would have my fireplace going right now. My fireplace is broken. Not good. Hey, Anne. Good evening, everybody. Glad I double checked the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tipsy Tuesday, an hour early. Good evening from Epcot. Just saw John Stamos. He was uh, the host down at Epcot for something. I missed it. Nice. Watching you from the gym, girl. Do it. Do Ooh. it. I can see names tonight. I don't. I never know why. Kathy's back in California. She made it home safe. Kathy Lamb. Good, good, good. Oh, Jill, I saw it. Bus driver Rod got the kidney stone. They're gonna have to do the lithotripsy. That's a shame. Big word. Big word. He'll be fine. But tell him I know his pain. Mm-hmm. And I can see you. I know, Brittany, you're in for a treat. Oh, the candlelight procession. John Stamos is at the candlelight procession. So good evening. It is uh, the early edition of Tipsy Tuesday, a uh, crossover event with Walla Cooking with Dye. You can join us at any point. You can sit and drink or you can cook with Dye tonight. Uh, I am going to be doing the drinking part of Tipsy Tuesday after I drink this vase of lemonade and eat cookies. I've been in bed all day. Now I'm hungry. Oh, Athena, I'm showing up my daughter's gymnastics class. I think I'll be able to watch this whole thing before this class is over at 625. <coughs> Probably. We just got back from Disney. My child sang in the candlelight procession. Did you see Anne Paglione? She's there. Um, so uh, waiting for an Italian dinner to be delivered. Oh, that sounds... Are you tired of lemonade? Let me tell you something, Kezia. Right now, bus driver Rod is in the hospital with a kidney stone. And if this is if this is what they say I have to do to not have a kidney stone, then I will drink as much lemonade as they say. Uh, Tina, did you get a restful day today? I, I did. I kind of did nothing again, which is very difficult for me. Um but I'm easing into it. Let me put it that way. I slept for like three hours um, and I'm feeling better. I don't know if you can tell by my voice, but I can tell my voice is not, <coughs> not as deep. I'm coughing less. So I'm definitely, um, I have a big vase like yours on my shelf. And I think of you every time I see it, good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. as, as we're speaking, I'm mixing this up. Um, I just pre-ordered my calendar. Boom. Anne Marie might have the first calendar of the season. So um, if anybody would like to pre-order a calendar, you can do so now. I'm not sure when we're going to cut off pre-orders, but it's going to be soon. Uh, and we'll only be making calendars uh, for as many people that ordered them. So make sure. So I'm drinking lots of cranberry juice. Hopefully get this one up in the next couple of days. Yeah, I would switch to lemonade lemon juice and like athena says like you're at the point he's at i would get like real lemons and like start mm, doing that i did not um so tart jane it's gross um i did not really see much of a difference when i was drinking cranberry juice and i was basically doing the same thing with cranberry juice kept getting kidney stones and uh i don't know from one kidney stone person to another um <clears throat> Yeah. So, you know, there's really nothing else I can tell them. There's no good. And here's the thing. Most of you wouldn't know this, but if a kidney stone is five millimeters or more, they'll have to blow it up. It won't come out. And Rod's is stubborn. 
It's not going anywhere. It's just going to be super painful. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I'm, I'm a little punky after our big vacation uh, wrote yesterday. And can you translate punky for everyone? Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Did you want to check your internet? No, I think it's okay, but I'll check. It. You just disappeared. All right. Hold on. Let's see what I got here. This says that I'm connected. I know that there was lady in the dark. Listen, I don't want to point out the obvious here, but when you say it says I'm connected and it's a blank screen, you have a problem. No, it wasn't yours that went blank. No. I no. can see me. You're all I, you're all pixelated. I'm all pixelated. Well, that's because I'm trying to recuperate from my wonderful trip. <laughs> Not at all. How to pixelate. Okay. <laughs> Did you check your internet? I did. I told you. It says that I'm on. Do you want me to like get off and come on again? No, I, I just do you are you on the best internet? Because there's usually like a good channel and then like a yeah, I don't know which one is which. I gotta go look. I wrote it down, it's on the computer. But anyway, anyhow, so I'm gonna cook fast. I don't know how fast we can make biscotti, but I'm gonna try. All right. Because I want to get back in bed, too. Okay. So I'm just a little punky. Uh, we had too much fun, so that was good. So in here, in my bowl, I have two and a half cups of the Bob's Red Mill gluten-free flour. And you guys all saw for before that came to us. Oh, so when you're eating, you're I'm just eating the peak and balls. Go ahead. Uh, so this is the Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one gluten-free flour that we use for our baking, which I really mm -hmm. love. So that's in there, two and a half cups, one cup of sugar, and two teaspoons of baking powder. And so you just you mix that all up, and, and then I make a little well in the center. So, you know, you just push the flour and the sugar to the side, and you have a little hole in the middle. And in that hole, I already measured the um, three eggs and the two teaspoons of vanilla. And I beat that up, and we're going to put that into flour. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. So all right, here she goes. Biscotti is really easy, and it's it's ingredients that you have around the house. So it's flour and sugar and eggs, some vanilla and baking powder. So it's not a lot of, you know, you don't need a lot of different kinds of ingredients, which sometimes you have to buy for other recipes. So I now, Carolyn said, in the old days, my grandma made the hole on the table. Yes, yes. Well, so did my grandmother. She had a board. My grandma. That's how old people used to do. Yeah, so that's what my grandma used to do as well. But I don't like to do it on the counter, you know, chemicals and stuff that you clean with. No, she puts all her asbestos right on the table. So she Well, no, you know, you're cleaning. You're always cleaning and you use that bleach or whatever, ammonia, whatever that stuff is. I don't want to put my flour on the counter. So my grandma had a big wooden board and that's all that went on there was the flour when she made pasta or biscotti or cookies or whatever Sorry, but, so and she would use her hand she didn't even use a fork she <coughs> just start to incorporate but that's what you do you start going around and you start to bring in some of that flour little by little and incorporate now this dough is going to be very sticky it's not um it's not a um dry dough you know for the biscotti it's going to be Dorothy, if you still have a problem with the buying a calendar, let me know. Let me know because everybody else is able to do it. If you have a problem, you can always reach out to Wendy, but it should be working. Nobody else is saying. Oh, Dina, speaking of the calendar, are we going to put Saturday <clears throat> Sunday back where it belongs? I got so confused. Yes, we were talking about that last yeah. week. That, that made me crazy. I would like to see where back where it was. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Um. No, I'm going to drink some bourbon, but I have to always drink one of these before I'm allowed to drink any liquor, you know, to keep the balance. I made that. So now that we're getting to have like a little bit of a sticky dough. I'm going to add, so I will have one cup of our chocolate chips. And these, you know me, I use the good Ghirardelli. 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 These are the dark cocoa, but you could use milk chocolate, but we like these the best. So I'm going to put these in here and start to mix them. So they're just joining us. And by us, I mean Diana. She's yeah. making biscotti tonight. Mm -hmm. um, now, biscotti uh, means twice baked. 
So when Diana puts these into, she's going to turn these into uh, like the dough that she's making and then turn it into a log. And then she's going to bake the whole log for a little bit and then take it out. And then we cut it up. And by we, I mean Diana. And then <laughs> turn it on its side and then we bake it again. So it's hard as a rock. The goal for a good biscotti is to be able to throw them across the room, hit somebody in the eye, knock them out. Well, you know, there are, you're saying that, but there are soft biscotti, like a sponge They're biscotti. They're not good. They're not good. Uh, I like them. We make those around Easter, Dean. I like the soft biscotti. Claire uh -huh. Marie wants to know, can you use a mixer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't, but I could have. Correct. Yes. Yes, you can. And that'll just incorporate if it. If you're Italian, you got to get in it. Well, yeah, that's what we're used to. It. Now, Vicky said, I keep missing the lives. I'm in Australia for Christmas, and the time is 15 hours ahead. Oh, my Vicky, gosh. When is Christmas in Australia? Because it's only the 5th. Are you there for 20 more days? I feel like if you go to Australia, you have to be there for that many days. That's number yeah. one. But number two, right. who are you staying with? The trip is really mm -hmm. long. Uh, somebody said, I get a softer biscotti from Trader Joe's. That's amazing. I'm not a fan. Well, the thing that I like about biscotti, I think I had told you when we were in Italy, Dad and I, and Kathy and Ron, and and uh, we went to we were in um, we were in Venice. We were in Venice, and in the piazza, you know, the the center where all the roads meet, and they have these nice little areas where you could sit and maybe have something to eat, or they have merchants there. Um, we went to this restaurant. And we had a nice meal. And afterwards, for dessert, it said um, bis, um, biscotti Vinsanto. Biscotti and Vinsanto. And Vinsanto is a sweet wine. And, of course, the biscotti. So you got this biscotti and this little glass of dark, it was a very dark amber color wine. And uh, the Vinsanto wine. And you dunk the biscotti in there. And when it's hard, it soaks up all that alcohol. And oh, man, was that good. All right. So somebody said, um, somebody said, can you go over the ingredients again? So it was just flour, eggs. Sugar. Sugar. Baking powder. Vanilla and chocolate chips. And the recipe's on, on your website. It's on the store. If you go to onefunnymotherstore.com, right. and you go to Walla the button, all the recipes for everything we make are there. Um, so you can always grab it there and then come back and watch this at another time. I'll just be drinking right. bourbon, but Diane would be making the recipe. Right. Um, so there's that. <clears throat> so, Diana, I thought that since you are making these biscotti, and you claim to be very Italian, which yeah. we know is a, is it moves. The percentage that Diana is Italian moves. I ordered her 23 and me I know, that was a couple fun. years ago. And she's I said, What do you think? What percentage Italian do you think you are? She I said a hundred. Hundred percent. I said, you are not even close. <laughs> what were you like 78%? Back then, it was uh, something, 69 or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, Not a lot. It was low, which shocked me. It really yeah, did. yeah. She had some Baltic islands in there. A lot of Mediterranean stuff. Well, and it said they call it uh, European, broadly European. So yeah. over the years, because more and more people do the test, it came back, and now I'm like 96 point no. eight. Yes, I am, no, dear. It didn't go that high. It did. I'll show no, you. You're do. just saying that you're making right. biscotti right now. All right. So you All right. So sticky, you know, that's fine. Don't worry about that. That's the way it's supposed to be. But you want to make sure that all the flour is incorporated, that you don't see white. So now I have my pan. All right. That I, I greased up. Uh, just with a little bit of butter. I know some people like to use that that spray, which I don't, but you could. But I just put a little bit of the butter on mine. So I'm going to tell you, you know, in the recipe here, I I, I used uh, three logs. But I'm going to hurry tonight because I don't feel well. <laughs> so I'm only going to do two logs. And when we divide it into two logs, 
the biscotti will be bigger. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you make two logs or three logs, um, but I'm going to make two. So the biscotti will be bigger. Can so you use I, parchment paper? Yeah, you can use parchment paper yet. Uh, you know, I just grease it real quick, but you could use parchment paper. So you got to just press it on there. And, and Somebody wiggle. says they make a special biscotti pan. Really? Well, I wonder if it's a long skinny pan and you just put the dough in it and you don't have to do this. You, you, I mean, I don't know. I've never seen a special biscotti pan, but that would probably be my thought that it kind of looks long like a snake kind of thing. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. Look it up. What's it look like? Well, there's a tart and quiche pan. Okay. It, it's like, um, it's like a, it's like a sheet pan that, um, is there a divider like? Yeah, that's got dividers in it. So how many are there? Two or three? I'll show you this. So like they got they got this. Oh, so you can make two biscotti. Okay. And that yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now these these are going to grow. You can see it's not real high, maybe about a half an inch. Can you see that? But it's going to grow. It's going to get higher and it's going to get longer. Uh wider. I'm sorry, wider. I hope they come out all right. I never made two, but like I said, I'm in there. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, while you're being Italian, I thought that we could give you the Are You Italian test. Oh, here we go. All right. So we can decide if you are really <laughs> that Italian as you make biscotti. As I make the biscotti. All right. Let's see. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Which food do you prefer? There are four choices. Pizza, pasta, burger, salad. Oh, wow. I'm a pasta girl. You know me. That's how my aunt named me. She nicknamed me Dina Pastina because I no, always- No, that's not what you order. Liar. What are you talking about? You don't order pasta. You order salad. Not now, but when I was a kid. Diana, what age do you think I'm asking you to play this game? I'm asking you right now. Well, I wouldn't eat the, I wouldn't. So what is it? Pizza, pasta, what yeah. else? Burger? And Pizza, what else? pasta, burger, salad. Oh, well, you know I'm going to order a salad now, but Italians don't eat like that. Okay, okay, okay. I just want to be clear that you got to answer it, not from when you were 13. This is you right yeah, now. Here yeah, we go. Look, look, I would prefer to eat the pasta because that's but Diana, health wise, health which, wise, which one did you order? <laughs> we already did this. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to question number two because you're already failing. Well, which gonna, activity what was do the you, Diana? I just which wanna, activity was, do you prefer? Okay. Painting. Writing, running, oh. cooking. Oh, I like cooking. Okay. You're going to give me that one. How would you describe your personality? Mm. Serious, mm. spaced out, mm. <laughs> a little bit of everything, or organized? Oh, I, I think a little bit of everything. Um, I'm not, you know, I mean, sometimes I'm organized, other times I'm not. I'm just a little bit of everything. Okay. For me. All right. Pick the word that stands out to you. Okay. Okay. The word is overlapping, functional, wonky, or perfect. Pick the word that stands out to you. Overlapping, functional, wonky, or perfect? I'm wonky. I mean, that's the way I see myself. Right now, that's the way I see myself, wonky. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is a very weird question. 
<laughs> you're not gonna get it. Who is your favorite Stranger Things character? I don't know Stranger Things. I don't watch it. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna say some names. Okay. And you're just gonna oh, have to. Pick I'll just. A name. All right, I'll pick one. Go ahead. Okay. The options are Will, Eleven, Eddie, Mike, Alexi, or Vecna. I'm gonna go with Mike because that that was Dad's name. Okay. No other reason. All right. Rate your stress level. Rate your stress level. On a scale of one to 10 or? Yeah, from one to 10. So here are the options. Zero, five, 10, 100. <laughs> I have to say, the older I get, the less I give two hoots about stuff. Like I feel, I feel. Yeah, I feel more relaxed. I, I I don't. Have you met you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. That's the way I see it. All right, these are going in the oven. Let's let's hope they come out good because I only made two. Who's taking this test right now? Me, I'm telling you, Dion. You I'm wouldn't. You wouldn't take. You wouldn't take a day quill. Well, that's not stress. That's a, that was my choose. That was my choice. I don't like taking medicine. Okay. Well, that seems like it would be stressful to you. It wasn't stressful. I just made the decision. <laughs> it was stressful when you came here and you didn't <laughs> want to take the medicine. Maybe it should be, what's the stress level of your daughter? So. When you show up. Are we then rating your stress level or mine? No, I just can't believe that you're saying as you get older, your stress level goes down. You well, stress about everything now. Oh, I got to leave before two o'clock. And I, I got to get in the car. I got to stop every hour and a half. I'm going to get a clot in my leg. It's going to aneurysm. Da, 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 da. You got you got 20,000 things. Well, oh, we can't go that. Those are Sunday oh, snacks. You can't eat them on no, Saturday. Da, 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 da. No, well, yeah, I get well, this. I got the celery in my teeth. Now, remember when you got the skittle in your mouth? Just yeah. Look, nobody wants to be sick, and when it comes to me, when I when I, but I'm not sick a lot. I mean, you're making. It's not about being sick. It's I'm about not. maybe stress and anxiety. <clears throat> What's your number? Your options are zero, five, ten, a hundred. You pick a number. Ten. I was going to say zero. I knew that would be. Wow. <laughs> I'm not a hundred. I do not feel my stress is a hundred. Okay. Then mine is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You got the other 90. I got 10. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I don't have, I don't understand how any of these questions have anything to do with being Italian. Well, that's what I was wondering. Oh, maybe I don't really read these tests before I, I get them. I'm headed and maybe that that's where that's coming from. Where? I would you leave your hairbrush? <laughs> Here are the options. My, oh, all right, I have options. Here are the options. Your backyard, your bathroom, your bedroom, outer space. Yeah, my, my hairbrush is in my bathroom where it belongs. I don't, I don't understand that one. This what is your favorite part about nature? Is it? Rain, sun, tornadoes, hurricanes. I like the sunshine. Such a weird test. Yeah. What is your ideal home? All right. Is it a fixer-upper, a mansion, an old shed with brand new windows, <laughs> or a new shed with old windows? What? What? <laughs> what kind of test is this? Hey, if you're giving me choices, I'm going to pick the mansion. I'm no dummy. <laughs> so a fixer-upper, a mansion, an old shed with brand new windows, or a new shed with old windows. Yeah, I'm going to, if you're giving me a choice, I'll go in the mansion. Heck, who wants an old shed? This, this test is getting weirder. I don't know what kind of test you're giving me. I don't know either. It was supposed to be a test about being Italian. 
I know what this one is. I'm just going to answer that one for you. Where is... All right, Diana. Here are the results of your test. <laughs> I'm not Italian at all. I failed terribly. It says, you're Italian, baby. You love to cook and express yourself through food. We love it. This is That was a weird test. Oh, see that? I'm Italian, baby. I like that test. That was a, this is a very weird test, Carrie. That, it started off Italian, and then it just went no, sideways. Yeah, I don't know where that where it went. That was odd. That was on BuzzFeed. I don't know. That was weird. So I do have to tell you, because we, you know, we haven't had a chance to talk. Let me, let me sit down. Hold on. <clears throat> so I do have to tell you, because a lot of people I know follow, you know, how I feel and how I'm doing. So right. remember, when I went to the doctors and my and my eye pressure was real high, 32, and they want me to take them drops. And then I went for the second opinion. Oh, that's right. And they said the yeah. same thing? I didn't tell you about the second opinion because we were getting ready to leave for it. All right. So let's just be clear. <clears throat> Here, let's be clear. Diana goes to the doctors. Now, we're not going to talk about this for 45 minutes like Diana would like to do. I see she's settled in. But... um. She, uh, they told her she got, uh, what the glaucoma, the cataract. Yeah, what happened after that visit? Because then I got this thing in the mail and they did gave me this printout when I made He said, the lady said you had the glaucoma. You didn't like how she talked to you. No, well, no, I'm sure she's a very brilliant doctor. That's not what you said. Matter. Yeah. She needs, she needs some help. Mm hmm so you um, had a doctor tell you you, were, you got the glaucoma. You were supposed no, she to never. She never actually said glaucoma. That's what I thought because she gave me the drops for glaucoma. So I thought I had glaucoma. When I got these printouts from the, the visit, you know, like your after visit summary, it says you have like ocular hypertension, like high blood pressure. It's not high blood pressure, but high pressure in your eye like you have hypertension like high blood blood pressure in your arm. but let's be clear mm -hmm. when you left the first meeting you were under the impression that she gave you glaucoma and the medicine to medicine it. glaucoma right and then you said i don't like her i don't like how she talked to me i didn't say that I, that's exactly what you said and then you said i'm going to get a second opinion it was very, it was very quick and I, and I want, my brain wasn't prepared for it. And I, okay. I, so now we're up to date. As long as we're all saying this up to this point, we agree. You went to the doctors. She gave you glaucoma. You didn't like how she looked at you sideways. You refused to take the medicine. You got another appointment. Here we are. Go. Right. So my, my pressure in my eye was 32. It's supposed to be 20 and under. So it was high. And then I got these printouts. And when I read it, I found out that I don't have glaucoma yet but I have this high pressure that could lead to glaucoma. Okay, and just what, the, what did the lady say? So I saw my regular eye doctor and I explained to her how I felt what was going on. She says, all right. She said, we're going to check your pressure today. She asked if I was using the medicine and I said, no. I said, my mom, my daughter made me use it one time She because I was there and she forced me and she put me in a headlock and she put these drops in. Oh, that sounds accurate. So, uh, but I said to her, wasn't you? So it was not quite two weeks. It was... 13 days, one day short of two weeks. So she checked my eye. She did the pressure. Guess what the pressure was? 47. <laughs> so it was 32. She uh -huh. took high pressure and I didn't use the medicine. It was 22. So you got glaucoma. I'm sorry? So you got the glaucoma. No, it went down. It's supposed to be 20 and below. It went but to you were 22. So you got the glaucoma. Oh, well, what she says, so when you go to the doctor, I don't know if they've ever done this test. They, they You look in this little thing and it measures the thickness of your retina, the thickness of something in your eye. And if it's very thick, they know that the reading that they get is actually lower. So it's not actually 22. She's probably, it's probably. You're saying a lot of words, Diana. I, do you have glaucoma or you don't have glaucoma? Long story short, I. It's this, not. There's nothing about this that was short, just so we're high clear. Pressure, I do not have the high ocular pressure. She wants me back in three months to check me again, but I do not have to use the medicine. I was very happy. So I said to her, it was two weeks ago and it went down 
10 points. I met my body might just needed more time. Is this how aggressive you are at the doctors? No, but I was so with happy. The arms? Doctor, you don't do this? Doctor, I said, oh, you made me so happy. And Jill, the, 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 the secretary there, you know, Jill, she remembers you. I went out, I said, I can't wait to tell Jill. And I'm running out and I'm Jill, Jill, guess with what? With the arms. Everybody was yeah, real aggressive, those arms. Okay. They were so happy for me. <clears throat> So I just wanted to update because everybody thought I had glaucoma because I thought I had, but no. But the hot. When are they going to test you again? Three months. I go back in March. And what if it's up? Well, then we'll address it from there. That's what she said. I'm going, I want to check you. I said, that's fine. I'll come back. But, you know, I don't know if it was just that my body needed more time to get all that, that, because it's, it, it goes up from the um, steroids. Mm. And, Oh, I didn't. Did I? Oh, yeah, I did put it on. Mm -hmm. um, but that was good news. So I was happy. I'm sure other people, if they ever have an experience like that, if they're using nasal steroids or oral steroids, if it goes up, you know, you should wait. Give your body time to get rid of all that stuff. Get, get let it go. Let it go. I was using um, any hit, not the antihistamine. <clears throat> yeah, it was. Claritin is an antihistamine, the pill. But I stopped that. And after I stopped that, that's when my pressure went down. Let me ask you something. When you go to like peanut butter and jelly day, or you go to the, the lunch bunch, if I was to attend one of these, how many conversations would I hear about everyone's last doctor's appointment? Oh, uh, lots, lots. Yeah, they, they talk about it a lot. Yeah. At, at, what, at what age does that... They got nothing else to talk about. What are they going to talk about? They where do they go? They go to doctors. I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of about their aches and pains, and yeah. That my, sounds fun. For my mother, she would say when she would go to her senior meetings, she says everybody asks, "Ah, Irene, how are you feeling?" And I always said, "I feel good." She says, "What am I going to tell them? My woes." <laughs> They got their own woes. They don't but need tonight. To you were like, you know, who needs to hear my woes? Well, I just want to tell them because so many people, you know, so die. You got glaucoma. So many. Oh, I had glaucoma, but that. <laughs> now, don't you remember? Now, Rudy was her name. Rudy couldn't hear for nothing. And don't you remember? She went. She went somewhere, and we kept telling what? her, Rudy. When you know what? You can't hear anybody. I can hear fine. And we'd say, you can't. You're not answering anyone correctly. I am. I'm fine. She goes to some some old people luncheon. Lunch. Yeah, the luncheon. Goes to the luncheon. And somebody says, oh, uh, Judy, how you doing? Judy says, oh, my husband just died. And I said, and Rudy said, oh, that's nice. She yeah. says, what? She and says, my husband just died. That's nice. Yeah, Why are you saying it's nice? I just told you he died. That's nice. That she lady got in trouble. <laughs> she got in a lot of trouble. She did. I remember that story. Mm -hmm. she, I felt so bad, you know, but I didn't hear her. And I just said, oh, that's nice. And she, then I, when she said it real loud, you know, she felt bad. He's dead. Yeah. He's dead. She felt that's bad. Nice. Oh, Jen says, tell us the story of Rudy and you driving to the, uh, to the bank. So Rudy, I used to pick her up. Me and Dean used to go pick up Rudy because we were, we had her car. She let us, she let us drive her car around. So anytime she had to go errands, we'd pick her up. I took her to the bank and she'd be sitting in the back with Dean, like driving Miss Daisy in the back. So I'd pull up so that the back window was at the drive through at the bank. <coughs> she'd do her banking, put the thing back in. It would go on its way. And uh, we left the bank. Now we're going to the Acme. That's what you do. Okay. We're on the way to the Acme. And I hear him say, uh, we got to go back. I said, back where? To the bank. I said, what for? Oh, what am I going to do with this? I said, what is it? And over the seat, she hands me the tube for the bank. She said, I still have it in the car. I said, you were supposed to leave it at the bank. You're supposed to take it out, sign it, put it in your purse, and then put the thing back in the, the thump, that thing. He goes, they're going to think I stole it. I said, they know you stole it. It's not they're going to think. The whole thing was recorded. 
That's funny, Dean. Uh, back to the bank. Get back in line. I'm thinking, I don't know why you people are in this line. There's no thing. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. Die. how long do we put the biscotti in and for what temperature? Oh, right. So the biscotti's in now. It says 350, about 20 minutes. My mom swears she can hear. It's very frustrating because she doesn't hear our questions and answers with the wrong response. Hmm. Hmm. Who's that sound like? I wonder who that is. So who that is, Charlene? Hmm? What? How much? Hmm. hmm. My dad is alive. We made him go to the doctor for his hearing. The doctor told us his hearing was fine, and he said he was choosing to ignore us. <laughs> Oh, you never I was in the drive through and the tube was missing. The teller said people drive away with them all the time. Most never get returned. <clears throat> That's so funny. Yep. Yeah, no, we, we drove back and we had to return it. My mom says what and then repeats what I said. Yeah. The tube disappears all the time. It's so weird. Uh-huh. So next week... Uh, we have an extra week. So we decided today, I know Stephanie texted you next week. We are going to add something to our list that we haven't done before, <clears throat> but I feel like it's so good, uh, because it's, it is so good because everybody should have this on Christmas morning. So we're going to make some gluten-free breakfast bakes. Casseroles. Casseroles. So Di's going to make one. I'm going to make one. We're going to do one that's sweet and one that's savory. So hold on. This light's making me crazy. So if anybody has <clears throat> a recipe that they like love to make, send it to tech at One Funny Mother to Stephanie. Um, and I'm thinking we'll do like a French toast one and maybe like a ham and cheese one. Right. Um, I don't have spinach and beans. <laughs> you know, I'll go off the rail. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're not allowed to do that. I like making this. I think this is a great idea because I'm going to make that and freeze it. Like, well, I'm going to make it, but I'm not going to bake it that night. And yours as well. I'd like to freeze it because, you know, we're going to Virginia Beach for Christmas. Yeah. And we'll take that, it's frozen, and then we'll put it in the oven for no, Christmas. Oh, no beans. No beans. No beans, Diana. Like spinach, red pepper, uh, the eggs, the bread. Um, I'm trying to think, like maybe asparagus. <clears throat> You know, I'll do a lot of veggies. I have a yummy French toast bread pudding. Yes, send us that. I send make, somebody said I make a Christmas sage sausage. Oh, that sounds yummy. Bacon, eggs, potatoes, and cheese. I have an egg and sausage I always make, a frittata. Yes, if there's one that you love. Uh, well, quiche usually has a crust to it. Correct, so yeah. Um, I guess, I mean, if there's a way we can make a gluten-free crust and let us know, but um, uh, we could buy the frozen crust, but they're small. Like I like making the casserole because we'll be a big group. So a lot of them might have family coming in on the holidays. Yeah. And when you wake up on Christmas morning, you want to get right into the presents. You just put it in the oven. Yeah. Uh I do like the French toast one that we had. There's a couple of them where you put on the bottom like um, brown sugar and maybe some nuts and and butter. And then you start layering the bread and milk and eggs mm -hmm. on top. Um, Somebody said if you use eggs, you have to pre-bake it, then freeze it. Not if the, if the egg trim is it. There, I just read this thing that said if you have a lot of eggs... And you don't, and you're not going to use them in time to get the egg, scramble it, you know, break the yolk, and and put it in ice cube trays, let it freeze, and then we pop. Have time for this? Oh, I don't. Why do you keep adding, making stuff that nobody's going to do? Why? Why do people do this? 
Mm-hmm. Our mm-hmm. eggs, if you're using eggs, it's mixed with the milk and everything, and you pour it over. There shouldn't be any reason why you couldn't freeze that. Mm-mm. You know? Um, I cooked three pounds of bacon last night to keep in the freezer. Oh, I would love to come over and eat three pounds of bacon. Mm-hmm. <coughs> So stay tuned. I'm not sure what it'll be a Tuesday. I think this is our last crossover. I think we got a little jammed up with the trip and everything, but usually we have tipsy Tuesday and then we do a separate night of la la. But the last, this last week, I think it's because last week I wasn't feeling well. So next, um, next week is the 10th. You, you'll be away again. We can't do it on the 10th. No, we can do it on the 10th. Huh? We can do it on the 10th. That's what I thought. I'm not, I don't know. And then the final one is the 17th. I did like when we did it in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the trip and Di's date last week. That's what it was. It was Diana. She had a hot date. Yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't. It was, it was, it was just two friends that went out, you know. For yeah. dinner. Well, it, I have friends. Yeah. Well, they're not always dates. You just meet up with them and you go out. It's not. I go out with my girlfriends for dinner, but I don't have guy friends that I go to dinner with without it being a date. Yeah. You meet your friends. You meet your comedy friends. Who goes out? Is that a date? Those are my, those are my coworkers. Is this guy a coworker? Yeah. From peanut butter and jelly. And from my my job. Oh, they're my workers at peanut butter Mm -hmm. and jelly. Exactly. Absolutely. And the bishop was there. He was there. It was funny. You see the bishop walking around. Hilarious. Yeah. And, oh, no, I mean, usually, you know how the bishop for mass, he's dressed up very ornately and he has that big hat. Well, he just had on a, a regular suit, like a priest with the black collar and the little white thing. Like if he was walking around, you wouldn't have known he was a bishop or if he was yeah. a regular priest. It's the it was, same. Oh, he was just talking to people at the tables. Yeah, you yeah. would know. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did I tell you? So Father Joe is the priest at Dice Church. <coughs> nice guy. So I've known Father Joe a long time. This was years ago. I'm working at a comedy club in Atlantic City. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm dirty. <laughs> Surprise. And I'm dirtier in a comedy club. So I come out, I'm hosting. I come out. Now, it's like a small audience. So it must have been like a Sunday night or a Monday. It's a much small audience. So it's like pretty intimate. Like there's only like 25 people there. So like you can literally make eye contact with every single person in the audience. And so I'm like, hello, thanks for coming. Thanks for-. And I look and there's Father Joe in the audience. But without, well, without the black... And the, and the collar and the white collar. <clears throat> now I'm looking at him. I'm like, that is Father Joe. But I'm the only one that knows that he's a priest because he don't have his uniform on. So now in my head, I can feel myself editing all the things that I was about to say because I can't now because I got to go to confession. So... <laughs> I was so, yes, I'm telling you, Donna, I was so messed up. And finally, I was like, listen, we got to have a serious talk because I said, you all don't know this, but Jesus is here, okay? And I know he's here and you don't know that he's here, but I can't curse or I got to go to confession, all right? So I'm just letting you know, one of these people is a priest, And everybody was in couples. He was the only one sitting by himself. And I was like, like that. It was so funny. It was so funny. But uh, he was at a show. Another time, (coughs) the church asked me one time to do a stand-up show for the nurses, the nurses, the nuns and a bunch of priests. And I was like, I knew it was a horrible idea, but you can't say no. If the, the nuns could come up to you and ask you for anything, I don't even know why they bother asking you because you have to say yes. No matter what they say, they'd be like, we're going to need you to give us one of your toes. You'd be like, okay, well, that's what All you right. said. This is, we're out of the oven. 
That's I'm going to let them cool a couple minutes and put them on the rack. And then I'm going to slice them. Go ahead. So she asked me to come. I didn't want to come to stand up, but I said yes. And I'm like, well, that's so far away. That'll never happen. But that happened. And then I'm there. And I was like, now what are we going to do? I was like, can I speak to you none outside of this door? So I go outside the door. She's like, what's up, honey? Real nice. They're all like this tall. She's like, what is it, honey? And I was like, listen, this was a poor idea. Okay. I don't know which one of you drunk nuns decided to hire a comedian. <laughs> it was a horrible idea. I was just like, honey, you're going to be fine. I was like, I curse, sister. I say a lot of curses. And this is not going to go well. <clears throat> She's like, I don't want to let you know, but we curse too. And I was like, oh, that is not making this better. I didn't do any. That's what she said jokes. I mean, in my head, I probably did. But it was, I spoke so slow. So I was like, so. <laughs> I was like, which one of you is going to be doing the confession in the back so I can go home? Mm-hmm. So my two groups here. And I want to trace. My mom and dad had friends. Father Mike. They would take him out drinking. You won't believe it. Nun Jan would come over. They left the church, got married. They had two girls. Oh, yeah. You Ooh. hear those stories, Jean. Ooh. Jan was greasy. So these things move around pretty good. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do y'all live? How far apart? We used to live around the block from each other. I don't know the and then I moved about 20 minutes away. And you would think that I moved transatlantic. And Diana was like, well, I can't bring you sugar now. And there was a whole big dr dramatic scene that Diana had to say. Now, how long does that have to cool before you cut it? I'm sorry? How long does that have to cool before you can cut it? Well, just a few minutes. Like... You know, it, it because you're going to put it right back on the tray, on this tray, and we're going to bake them again. So we'll see how it cuts. And so you always cut them on an angle. Because if they you cut them straight, you'll yeah. die. They have to be. My old priest is in prison. I'm not going to ask why, Laurie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, look how good. Oh, so these chocolate chips, you know what? <laughs> because I use these big ones, they're going to be melting all over the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're still hot. Bourbon and biscottis. Mm-hmm. And biscotti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never done a confessional. Hell, I'd never get out, said Mooney. I know. Nobody likes you cutting on this glass cutting board. Besides the, the sound it makes, it's going to ruin all your knives. Well, the reason I like it is it's easy to keep clean and sanitary. So, you know, that's why I like The funkiest I've ever gotten was at a church function, sitting between the pastor and the deacon who kept filling my glass when I wasn't looking. <laughs> and there it is. Can you freeze this? Yes, because I, I will freeze it. I will freeze them after mm -hmm. I toast. And uh, but look at them. Don't they look delicious? Oh, my gosh. They're beautiful. But the chocolate chips are really hot. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to shut that thing off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was good times. Good times. So, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other times. We had a couple of priests come when we were off Broadway. They came to the show. <clears throat> they tried to pretend they weren't priests, but I outed them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see that? How nice. Look. Mm -hmm. Do you put them flat back on the sheet? Yeah. So now they're going to be on their side yes. so that they're exposed to the heat <laughs> element like that. Yeah, right. I'm late. Like down like this and then we're going to put them back in the oven and maybe between 10 and 15 minutes uh you don't have to turn them over because they'll get toasty on both and that's what we like it to get them nice and crisp and that's what dries them out takes out that extra moisture yeah and what if you don't drink coffee so they're called dunkers you could well they're kind of like well, a dunker. they're not 
dunkers. They're not really dunkers, but you can put them in coffee and tea. You can put them with uh, over ice cream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the other thing is wine. You can dunk them in wine. You can dunk them in bourbon, and it'll and that's. <laughs> but Dina, you don't have to dunk it. Milk. You could just eat it. You know. So look, let's say you didn't want them real crispy. Just put them in for a couple minutes to get a little dry, and they won't be as hard. And you don't have to dunk them. So you don't have to make them real hard. That's you know. Like I said, there is a soft biscotti. Um, Why are mine crumbling bad when slicing, said Sandy. Now they're crumbling? Did she cook it enough? Maybe she cooked it too much. Or or is it too hot? Is it too hot? Is it too hot, Sandy? Is she using the gluten-free flour like we did or regular flour? I don't know. These are all good questions. Right. Um, you could you could dunk it in hot chocolate. Oh uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now what I want to do, Dean, I haven't tried it, so I made this recipe up. He said twenty minutes cooled for five. I'm Gluten sorry. free, she said. She's using the uh, Bob's Red Mill. She said gluten free. Roxanne said bad knife. Try a different knife. Oh, that could be. That could be. Yes. Try a different knife. But these are good. And again, this one, doesn't it keep you up all night peeing? A little bit. But I probably drank four or five of these today. And uh, everybody always asks me why I use such a big glass. Because if I had a regular glass, it would be like 16 glasses. It's just too much for me. I got bigger vases. I could have one giant vase will just be this big. But I don't want to look crazy, you know. Um. So we have officially crossed over into Tipsy Tuesday. It's time for the bourbon part of our show. If you're just joining us, welcome. We are making biscotti and drinking bourbon tonight. It's a crossover event. Probably our last crossover event of the season. We had to work around (coughs) um, some not feeling good, which was on my side. Guys, dates that she's been on. So we had to work around our schedule. Because he had a date. He picked her up at her house, took her to dinner. Uh-huh. He was very nice, dude. He had a good time. We both had a good time. Uh-huh. He'd sit at home. It beats sitting home and, and you know, doing nothing. Okay. Going relaxing. Mm. Very nice. At the end of the night, I thanked him for being my friend and for take for accompanying me. I said, Joe, you were a good escort. He says, oh, I had a good time. Oh, oh, okay. You don't say call him an escort. That makes it worse. No, well, I didn't want to say. Mom, do you know what an escort is? Well, there's lots of escorts. A lot of times. No, no. Well, you're thinking dirty. <sighs> you're thinking dirty. Right. If, if, I, if I was standing next to a man and I said, he picked me up. <clears throat> we went to dinner. We're not dating. He's my escort. There's what? only what? he's your escort. Why? That's bad. <clears throat> I don't think that's bad. There's Voila is the cooking show that we do. Now we have two more cooking shows left on the main page this season. We are going to be doing a breakfast bake uh, next week sometime. And we are also going to be doing honey balls. Speaking of escorts, honey balls. You got a honey? Honey balls. Mm-hmm. 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 Now, I like them actually a little bigger, so this is nice. You know, if I made three loaves, they would be smaller in size. They wouldn't be as long. Nobody as wants that. Do you like bigger? Everybody likes bigger. Um... But I want to try this recipe, and I want to put pistachios and cranberries. Oh, yeah. Man, that's good. I had made another recipe one time, but I didn't like the recipe. Like that lady said, the one recipe that I filed, filed, followed, and all the biscotti broke. So I'm going to try my recipe, and I'm going to put 
some pistachios and some cranberries. I love because it looks like Christmas. You got green pistachios and then you have the red cranberries. Oh, so good. So good. So good. How do you make your lemonade, Charlene? <clears throat> Funny you should ask. Make lemonade. I fill it up with ice to here. Then I yeah. fill it up with lemonade. It's got sugar and everything. And then the you rest is water. Buy, buy it in a jar. What? You buy that lemonade. Yeah, I don't make it. I just, I just can't. Like it's sugary, so I can't drink that much sugar. I just need like a little bit of taste. I just, I just can't drink water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joey Joe said, "Dina, I could be your stepdad. Well, would you like to be an escort to my mother, Joey uh, Joe? Escort. She's I looking for escorts." I would have mm -hmm. liked to dance, but you know, I couldn't because I had an injury and I couldn't dance. Mr. Magner pushed her over. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes Jim gets crazy and just likes to push old people over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm okay. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Oh now see, I was hoping I could get all the all the biscotti on one tray, but I, I'm not able They're to too do big. Them. I know I like them big. They look good. What's the matter? <laughs> Nothing. You're doing a great job. Okay, let me put them in the oven. I'm going to toast them now. Okay. Ten, I'm going to do ten minutes. It said fifteen, but I think ten to fifteen. I don't want to get. I don't want them to get real hard. I don't like them real hard. I want them like in between. I'm not going to move my face. I'm going to stare off in the distance when she talks. Mm -hmm. It's too much for me. <clears throat> no, what it is. Megan now. asked, tell us more about the proposal. It's so funny that you asked because I'm going to be posting the proposal tomorrow. So you can see the whole thing. Dean, uh, uh, put that is together. Uh, mm -hmm. It was so beautiful. So, mm -hmm. so can you better get out of here. Let's see how many I got out of this with the two loads. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People are going to end up in Facebook jail. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Christy. I pride myself on keeping my face like this. Mm -hmm. All right. Jessica just ordered her calendar. If you have not done so, uh, the calendars are up for pre-sale. So make sure uh, you get your orders in because we don't order extra. So um, no, Dean didn't get engaged. No, Jeanette, he just uh, edited the video. Uh, we had our first engagement of a, a One Funny Mother trip. It was very exciting because it, um, it was a surprise for all of us. Um, but it was so good uh, and so beautiful. Uh, Anne-Marie, so I, I knew about the proposal maybe 10 minutes before it happened. <laughs> we were... Um, we were... Uh, at the uh, dinner, <clears throat> as a buffet, and I finally had a chance to go grab a plate and sit down. And Robert came over, and he was like, "Where are you going to be eating dinner?" And I said, uh, "I don't know, like over here by the table." Are you eating it already? The butt ends. The oh butts. God. Okay. And so uh, he said, okay, I wanted to talk to you. And here I'm shoving food in my mouth, my mouth. And thank goodness I was facing the wall. So everybody's behind me and I'm facing the wall, shoving food in my mouth. And he goes, I wanted to talk to you. And I said, uh, okay, well, what's up? He said, um, I might have a ring in my pocket. And <laughs> I, my whole face, my whole face was like, Ugh. and Brooke was standing here. I think Dean was here. And all of us were like, what? And so just in my mind, I was like, okay, all right. Okay. Calm down. Calm down. Girl, get it together. And then I turn around. I look at Wendy. She's like, la, la, la. She had no idea. <laughs> <coughs> so I whispered to Chris um, and I told Dean to get ready. So we kind of huddled together uh, and put together a plan. Um, and it was just so beautiful. So, um, so it was lovely. You know, it's so fun. I There are so many moments that... Um, I think I, I look at 
when we're together on these trips. And it's a lot of work. And Wendy and Chris and so many people on our team do such a great job of putting things together. So like <clears throat> everybody that comes on the trip gets a bag when they first get there with like the stuff for the weekend. And I said to them, like, if you looked at that bag, like someone on our team touched every, every person on our team touched something in the bag. Um, you know, whether it was the designs of um, Jeff for the shirt or Wendy ordering the hats and getting them embroidered or Chris that did the pin or Stephanie that's helping to organize, you know, the things and like the forms. It just it was so lovely. And, um, you know, it's just it's so much work on our side to just kind of make it come together. Um, but it is so lovely to just kind of look at that room of like 70 some people and just think like none of these people knew each other before this craziness of the Internet. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think a lot of people will say and I agree with a lot of it that, you know, social media can be quite awful sometimes. Um, but then you stand in that room and Joey Joe's doing costume changes and Robert is proposing and everybody's so excited and crying for the lady you met on the internet, her boyfriend, da, da, da. It's just, it's just lovely. Um, so yeah. And then the supporters were making things for each other. So you walked out and there were, there were Christmas ornaments and cookies and little things that people made and were handing out. The um, with the red nose. The red noses, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So it just was, um, it was so lovely um, to, to be able to do that. Um, we do. We do need a QR code on our shirt. So when people ask us who we are, we can just say scan our QR code. I know it is kind of funny. We do have to have something. We, we tend to stand out. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's the giant <clears throat> phallic symbol on the shirt. But um, it was just it was super lovely. And we did. We probably <clears throat> I'd say 10 percent of the people were people that were joining us for the first time. Um, which was also lovely. And I think our group just does such a nice job of really kind of bringing people in. And, you know, there's a lot of people that come on their own. Yeah. Um, yeah. And many supporters who haven't gone on these trips have still managed to make friends. It's true, Joyce. And it's lovely because a lot of times, you know, people will say like, Hey, I'm going to come for the first time. And, um, and, you know, they just kind of get put into the fold and you're like, all right, here's somebody that's been on this trip before. And we had a lot of people who have brought people. So uh, like Tanya's friend, Jamie, joined us on Sunday for the show. I know Tanya's mom, her dad, her bestie, Jamie. She goes, she gonna be like, this is my godchild. It's my niece. I'm bringing one of the teachers from the school. Amber said, I'm scared to come on my own. Ah, Amber. Listen, there's a, there's a lot of people, too, on this trip, Amber, who will tell you, <clears throat> I'm not going to say their names because maybe they don't want you to people to know, but they've written it on the supporter page. But there's a lot of people. There's somebody that wrote on the supporter page and said, I'm coming on the trip. I have a lot of anxiety. And so if I don't talk a lot, it's not because I don't want to talk. It's just, if you come and talk to me, I'll absolutely talk to you, but I probably won't come up and talk to you first. Um, and so there were a lot of people. So there are pages when we do a trip, we make a page for that trip so that all the people on the trip can put their photos there, share photos. Um, <clears throat> but you can talk to each other. And so people had put on there, um, you know, I, I'm coming by myself. Um, in fact, I think it was Sarah and Heather were both coming from Connecticut and both of them said, we're coming from Connecticut and we need a roommate. And so Wendy put them together and they were actually behind us in the line. So you didn't hear the story die, but we were checking in and there was a little problem with check-in. So it's taken a minute. And these two ladies were behind us. I didn't, I've never met them because they were new. So I don't take for granted that every person I meet is on the trip, right? So I don't know them. 
So Wendy and I are in line and then these two ladies and then here comes Chris. And I said, well, Chris, we're going to do ours. And then these two ladies are next and then you can go. And so <clears throat> I said, I just don't want to cut in line for the two ladies that are here. And Chris was like, that's fine. So she's waiting. And they were so nice. Something came up about Diana. And, and Dean was like, isn't grandma in your room? And I was like, no, she is not in my room. She is in your room and she is not in my room. And they're laughing. And I was like, you haven't met my mom, but you would understand. And so they're laughing. And then they said, Chris, just, they said, you can go ahead of us. They were lovely. Well, it wasn't until an hour later, I'm checking people in and they're with our group. It was Heather and Sarah. And I was like, why didn't you say you're with our group? I had no idea who you were. Um, but they were like, oh no, it was just so fun. We were, we were scared to say hi to you. It's just so funny. <laughs> but I, you know, they, when they were sitting in line, they were talking to each other. I thought they knew each other, but they literally had connected through Wendy um, and, uh, and made friends before the trip and then roomed together. So um, I couldn't explain to my friends why I was having dinner with 50 people I never met, but I talk, uh, but I talk to every day. Yeah. It is. It's really lovely. You can call me out on my social anxiety over to us. Tammy. Tammy always says good morning. And she did. She put on there and she was like, listen, I'm just super nervous sometimes. And I don't want you to think I'm standoffish. But if you come over and talk to me, I'll absolutely say hi to you. Um, and so I just thought it was great. And like I said, there are a lot of people who will come out and say like, listen, this is who I am. Um, my cousin, Athena Martinez. There she is, Mona. Welcome. Uh, I've driven I've driven with anxiety by myself to Diamond Dina's in your shows because if you're in this group, I've done things I love, said Alejandra. Oh, Alejandra is the best. And she did the same. We had put together our Diamond Dina and she said the same thing. She's like, guys, I'm coming and I'm so nervous. Um, I know we are absolutely uh, anxiety positive here. But if you've watched any of my stories with Brooke Blizzard, you know that I say, like, just because you're afraid of something doesn't mean you can't do it. Uh, and you have to decide whether you're going to let your anxiety decide what you do or you're going to decide. And if you come and you have to cry the entire time, then you come and you cry. Nobody going to bother you. And guess what? You're going to cry a little bit and then you get better. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's super lovely. Um, so if not this trip... Hopefully some other trip in the future you can join us on. And I am going to work on the video tomorrow so you can kind of see some of the highlights. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's actually kind of lovely when everybody gets together. Um, I forget who said it this morning or yesterday morning. Oh, it was Carrie. And she said, every trip I buy a solo ticket and I'm never alone on this trip. So uh, so it's, it's pretty lovely. Um, so, um, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Carmen. And I'm a big fan. I'm like, listen, I'm going to be there. I'm going to cry. I remember doing stand up <clears throat> the first probably year and I had no idea what I was doing. And I remember just being like what they say, like on deck, like the comedian in front of you is up and I would be in the back and I just felt like I was going to throw up every single time for a full year. And I would sit in the back with my little notebook, feeling like I was going to throw up. And I just remember thinking like everything about my brain was saying, don't go up there. But I was like, I'm going to rely on my feet. I rely on my feet. My feet are going to get me from here to there. And if it gets me to the stage, then I have to just figure it out. But I just need to put myself there because I know myself. Like once I'm in, once I'm, I'm in, I'm in. But trying to put myself there was another thing. So, you know, whether it's a trip or whatever, sometimes just signing up for a class or, you know, putting yourself in a situation where there's a lot of people and just, you know, most people, if you say to them, hey, I want to be here, but I get a little anxious. I'm just going to go over here by myself for a few minutes and calm down a bit. Um, I went by myself on the bus trip. It was hard to explain meeting a bunch of people I met on the internet at five o'clock in the morning in a mall parking lot. It is true. Which I just said, excitement is the same. So he trained himself to say he was excited and not nervous. Um, yeah. I think bourbon was the hardest because I didn't know if I would see anyone again. Now I know I will. Oh, the calendar should be on the store page uh, if you don't see it. Um, so 
I can't go places by myself or I have full anxiety attacks. I stay up sick all night and get no sleep. I went to a conference house for one night by myself and I was sick all night. Katie, I get you. I get you. Well, just know that there are other people feeling the same way. Uh, and, you know, maybe we'll have a trip that's near you that, you know, you can figure out how best you can come. Maybe you join us. We always have like a one nighter. So like we did our Friday night. Um, so people can come for one night and meet everybody. I think the Friday nights are some of the best nights because we find a place and we will sit there for <coughs> three or four hours and it's just us and it's, uh, just a lovely, a lovely time for everybody to kind of get to know each other and all these things. So I went to Jersey brunch by myself and met so many people that one and Myrtle beach, Myrtle beach was I was there doing stand up and there were so many people at that meet and greet. That was so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do these look good? I don't know if you could see Dina, but the edges are just a little toe, a little gold. Mm -hmm. They look really good. For about uh, maybe 14, 15 minutes. Did I say Palm Springs? I met, I might've met Palm beach. It's the one, it was the one in California. I think I told everybody it's gone to Palm Springs, but I think maybe, no, it was Palm Springs, right? Because I got there, I thought I was going to Palm Beach. And I was like, how far are we from the beach? And they were like, you're nowhere near the beach. I was like, it got it in its name. And they were like, you're talking about the wrong place. You're in Palm Springs. Oh. Palm Beach is in Florida. And I was like, oh. <laughs> We have a great bourbon restaurant in New Albany. I do have an event coming up in Ohio yes. in the spring. I didn't think about it, but maybe we maybe we can do a, a dine with Dina before my event. Palm Beach is in Florida. So I was in Palm Springs. And yes, you missed it. And it was a long time. Uh, Laura, you should have said hi. Um, I live here. I had no idea. Oh, Stacy, you got to meet up with Kyle. Kyle lives there. Oh, wait, Stacy, we went to the best crepe place, and you have to know it because I imagine it's the only one. I don't know, but it was a pink building, and it was real creepy. Um, it there was there was like a building in the front. And I was like, I'm here for the crepes, and they were like, we're gonna go out the door, go down this hallway, this alley. And there's a window in the back. It was so creepy. Best creep I ever had in my life. L best. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Gluten free. Mm hmm. So good. But steak's like, you coming to Ohio, girl. What? Yeah, yeah. I just booked it. It's not a performance, it's for a conference. But uh, maybe we can come out early. I have to look. I didn't book my flight yet. Let me look. Mm-hmm. She's just baking away. Bacon. You signed my hair hat. Oh, that was nice. All right, Di, where are we? I'm putting them on the tray. Hold on a second. I don't okay. want to. Oh, they have to cool. Go, go, Gabinos? Stacy was so good. And it was chicken. And I tried to shove the whole thing in my mouth. <laughs> And it was so good. Duty, Judy. I said Ohio. Yeah. Dayton? Uh, everybody, if that's near you. Um, good. They look good. It would be around there. <clears throat> Stacy, I would come to Palm Beach just for Gam Gabinos again. I keep wanting to say Gambinos because I'm Italian, but it's not. There's no M. It is Ohio. My hubby wants to go to that jail that you went to. Yeah, it was really good also. Because if I tilt it, it will all slide off. But the edges are golden brown. It's hard to see. Uh, but they'll be nice and crispy when they're all cool. And I'm going to pack them up. Um, I'll stick these in the freezer. I mean, I guess I could just leave them in a container. What's today? Nah, it's still early. Today's only the 5th. And if I do leave them out, I'll eat them all. That's the problem. Mm. I have to um, put them uh, in a container. And they look good, Di. You did a good job. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make it with pistachios and cranberries. 
Because I, I will take all the good ones that you just made and put them into a container and put Dina on it and freeze them. Okay. And then you can do whatever you want on your free time. You could have made them tonight. You were fine and full and, and nothing wrong with Diana, you. Diana, I'm very sick. Look at my face. Yeah, you're fine. Uh -uh. In Palm Beach. They were in Palm Beach, Leanne. And it was the literally, I would fly to Palm Beach just to get these crepes again. Mm-hmm. 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 I know. Can I start putting one biscotti into every order? I'd be like, and with your calendar, uh, you I one biscotti. It'd be great. Because I made these, oh, I can't, I have to keep track. Because I made these bigger, they remind me of the long ones that you get that known as. I keep saying Palm Beach, Palm Springs. You but, know, makes those long ones. So I never made them this big, but I do like them. Mm-hmm. So I think I will just do two. But like I said, the recipe says to make three. And they're just not as um, long. Rebecca said she ordered the um, the biscotti pan. She's going to let us know how the pan is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, it's fine in this pan. I just, you know, put a little butter on it. Or you could use parchment paper. But... um. <laughs> you really need to hire Diana out like a cooking ex escort. <laughs> Where Diana just comes to your house and just makes Italian goodies at your house for like a weekend. Yeah, yeah I like uh -huh. to, you know, I mean, like, this is what I got. I got pecan balls coming up. I got some, I got some cannolis over here, homemade cannolis. <clears throat> Cheryl said, can you use anise instead of vanilla? Yeah, yeah, I would, but I wouldn't put the chocolate chips with the anise. If you're if you're going to use the anise, I would put maybe almonds in there and the anise flavoring. I don't know that the chocolate and the anise, like that licorice, would blend well. Mm. My mom didn't put anything in them. She didn't, you know, she didn't put any chocolate. The anise ones were plain, and she would use the um, anise flavoring. Well, she used the oil. The oil is real strong. You only put a couple drops of the oil. But the extract, you could use like the two teaspoons. Now, somebody asked about um, freezing of the cookies. So a lot, we usually do our cookies in a, in a, in a certain order, um, specifically going into the season, because some things will freeze better than others. So we start off with like pecan balls. Like I had one tonight. They were from the freezer. The luscious layer bars are easily freezable. We never have leftover peanut butter clusters, so if you want them, we I don't know that we've ever frozen those. And we never freeze the pizzelles. So. We never freeze the pizzelles because people eat them. Right. And we usually a little later we had to change things around with schedules this year. So we did make them pretty yeah. been eating them. So it's fine. Yeah, and so our the last thing that we make are the honey balls. Those we've never frozen either. So you want to keep them pretty close to the event. You guys got a walk-in freezer somewhere? Now she puts them in like little containers, some in mine, some in hers. I um, just froze. I don't know if you realize, but the extra cookies that Tanya sent home, the rainbow cookies, I, I layered them, stuck them in your freezer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Tanya said, that's why I make rainbow cookies early because they freeze so well. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so you should be able, and it's funny because the honey balls are kind of weird. Um, and not everybody likes them. Like they're, I would say they're probably <coughs> like the most Italian other than the Pitzel's cookies, but you have to really like honey and just fried dough, uh, because it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a, of a different thing. Um, but we are going to be doing our breakfast bake. Um, when were you all in Palm Springs? Stacy won't let up. She's like, girl, tell me when you were there. It was, um summer it was hot i just remember being very hot september joey Joe will know athena will know yeah luann's like i didn't care for the honey balls yeah it just uh, we make them because my grandma used to make them and i just remember her sitting here by uh thanks charlene by the by the oven and just make them she also remember she used to do fried cauliflower yes yes well because you know 
So the reason we had all the fishes is years ago. You it did. was. It was my birthday. It was September 28th. You're right. It was my actual birthday. How did I forget that? Um, years ago, you could not eat meat on Christmas Eve. It was a day of um, abstinence. And so people that me or you, are you beeping? Oh, that was me. Um, and so people ate the fish, and so she would make the fried cauliflower along with the um, uh, all the fishes for our vegetable. And, um, and then after 12 o'clock, it was my cousin Joey's birthday on Christmas Eve. Uh, we would go to mass and then uh, go back to Aunt Anne's, and she would have ham. And so right after 12 o'clock, the next day, we could start eating the meat. But um, it's nice. I feel bad, Dina, because a lot of our traditions, we don't do as much as we did with my mom. You know, things change. Yeah, we do. We make all these cookies. Well, we do the cookies. But when I think back, she used to make salmon. She used to do the um, the tripe. She would soak it. It was the coffee. Well, we haven't really done the seven fishes. Um, but I want to do the seven fishes this year. Well, Nikki and I, we made up a list and we got seven. So, okay. Is one of a filet -O fish What seven did you come up with? Let me see. Lobster. Salmon, shrimp, bacon wrapped scallops, crab cakes, tuna, and flounder. All right, but who's going to make the crab cakes? Uh, well, she and I were talking about that. I told her, I mean, we could find gluten free ones made up that are frozen. Did you ever try any that are good? Now, maybe we should add that to our list because I I love crab cakes. Well, I'm going to get Cousin Linda. Cousin Linda's made them, and it's her mother's recipe. Or maybe it was Aunt Ida's. It's we some, don't do bacala. Nobody eats the bacala. I know, but and the schmelz, my mother always made the schmelz. I said to Nicole, let's oh, make the schmelz. She, she doesn't want to make the schmelz. Wait, Karen says they do the seven fish. And Karen, what are the seven fishes that you do? Well, you pick whatever you want. We never had, when I was a kid, you think my mother made lobster? She didn't make the lobster. Yeah, she didn't make yes. the lobster. said we make the, the smelts. Salmon. Tripe is tough, tasteless, without tomato sauce. Don't, take the tripe off. Tripe is out. Yeah. Do you got calamari on that list? No, I don't, I don't eat calamari. No. Tripe is out. Calamari's in. Take nope. what? Tripe is out. Tripe's not on here. Oh, you're talking to Karen. No, I'm talking to you. I don't have calamari on here. Tell me the list again. Lobster, salmon, shrimp, scallops, crab, tuna, and flounder. Now let's give her that tuna. Who's going to eat it? I never had tuna. Is it good? Yes, you have. You've eaten tuna. I mean, well, tuna out of a can. but No, I'm let's good. do fried calamari. Are you going to make fried calamari? Yeah. I have I have calamari in my freezer from like last year when I got was it COVID last year and I was gonna make it. Now you're not cooking calamari. Karen says shrimp, scallops, flounder, crab, maybe salmon. But like I said, you do some do sardines, some do anchovies, some do the smell. Four of your seven are not fish. Listen, are they in the water? Who ain't fit? You gotta be in the water. The lobster and the shrimp. Well, my mom used to do, she did do shrimp. We did scallops. We never did crab. Yeah, yeah. You don't mom, eat most of this. She would do the cod. I don't, and she might have done Oh, the tripe is cow stomach. Oh, no. It didn't. No, my mother did I don't the tripe. Know who said tripe then. Did the schmelz. But that's what I'm saying, Dina. We've modernized over the years to make fish that we enjoy more she today. does clam sauce oh some people used to make the spaghetti with the clam sauce yeah oh yeah. i see salmon and then she said we don't and then i lost her good we had six the last one was swedish fish somebody said. <laughs> got it in there got it in there so we used to make fried smelts she would do she'd she'd open them fillet them this, this bread this. them fry them right Oh, they scungili scun scun salad. Scungili, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, uh, that's um, octopus. 
It's congeal, yeah. It's the feast of the seven ocean foods. Yes. There yeah. don't want to be fishes. Right. Mm. Um, but, you know, and my mom, sometimes if you remember, she would make you the shrimp or the scallops with the angel hair pasta and the garlic and the yeah, olive. Yeah, yeah, What's a smelt? A smelt is almost like, um, it's what sardines. are the things in the can? What's the can that used to make me eat? Sardines. They're right. almost like sardines. They're yeah. small. But if you yeah. fry anything, you can't even tell what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. But you got to remember those things that my mother made cheap, they weren't expensive. Oh. But we got to. Says all of this sounds it, disgusting. You know how much this, this fish is going to cost? Cost a fortune. Well, what about mahi mahi? That's really good. I never had mahi mahi. Oh, wow, it's so good. Well, yeah, you could do like a broiled. Where you go, what are you going to do with the flounder? Probably just broil that with a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's good. Mm. You are making me so hungry, said Athena. I don't even like fish, but I've been in bed all day. I know. So you know, I, 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 I've been I've been Venmo and Nick some money to to pick up some of this stuff because it ain't cheap. No, that's true. So she finds I'll Venmo like, her some prayers. The lobster tails, the frozen ones. Sometimes they go on sale, and she could just put those in her freezer. Mm. The bag of shrimp, she could buy the big bag of frozen shrimp. Mm -hmm. and the, the salmon, I want to get fresh. Save the money. Skip the fish. What are the seven fish for? So, Robin, the number seven in the Bible is a very holy number. And if I paid attention in CCD in Catholic class more, I could tell you why. I just know that it is. And it has to be seven. And it has to be fish or fish adjacent. Friends of fish which a lobster is probably friends with a fish. And so is crab. It's fish adjacent. It's of the seven fish adjacent. Or what you can afford. <laughs> uh -huh. But I'll tell you something. I'm telling you, Christmas. Now, listen, I got to get now, you know, every year I start looking in, in all the pawn shops. For for the the can the 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 canister for the uh what am I eggnog maybe maybe we'll have to we gotta tell that story one day we gotta tell the story one day but I gotta have the thing and Michelle has it yeah I know for some reason because you gave it to her the sweetest fish does count as a, as one of the fish <laughs> can't her. Leah. Mm -hmm. So it could have been the peacock. I could have served eggnog in the peacock. All right. Maggie has pepperidge, farge, goldfish, pretzel flavor, pizza flavor, cracker flavor, parm flavor, nacho flavor. And <laughs> mm -hmm. She got it covered, Dean. All right. So Tanya said, I make coquito, which is Puerto Rican eggnog. Yes, I've heard about that. My my girlfriend Maria from the Quelch freaking and she makes that the coquita. That has coconut milk and um mm -hmm. eggs and uh I don't know what liquor they put in there if it's mm -hmm. in wrong. Now I've been buying non-dairy eggnog and it's really good. Yeah, some of them are really good. Yeah. It's I'm really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So good. Look, all of us are now we're all starving. All of us just talked about food for how long? Um, Carmen is making it on a Zoom this weekend. Coquito? <gasps> I saw that. I did see that. She's she making it? Yes. Yeah. But she's doing she needs to come on when we do our breakfast bake and she can show us how to make Coquito. The ninth is Carmen, uh, are you here? The ninth is the Christmas party, and you got your stand up. She's doing it the ninth. All right. Well, maybe she can save some. We can do it on the tenth. I don't know. Carmen, are you here? Well, the tenth we're supposed to. Yeah, I wanted to do it with you on a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably not on a. Oh, you mean like on a Tipsy Tuesday? What if we, Carmen, add you to our breakfast bake? I'm not sure what day that is. You'd have to check with Stephanie. But um, stuff going on on that breakfast bake. 
Yeah, yeah, but then it's going to bake, and then we can bring Carmen on. Say what we want. Oh, yeah, we'll watch Carmen make it. All right, well. All, all right, right, Carmen. Somebody's going to be in touch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's the same night as the show. Yeah, no, we'll have to do it a different night. Coconut cream, coconut milk, condensed milk, evaporated milk. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. But I got to get... Um, I'm not sure. Like, I am not sure if I just have, like, an allergy to dairy or if like all of those creams are gonna affect, cause I don't have a gallbladder. Like, like I can taste a little bit of it. Yeah, it's anything that's high fat and that's if I can't eat it either, Dean. My gallbladder. Well, we make it, Carmen. Yeah. Uh, so you can come on and show us, but we'll we'll be in touch and let you know. Watch when. Carmen make it if we can't make it. Mm -hmm. so, no, love to try it. I love it. I love it when all of you share all of your wonderful foods, which brings me to another good point. If you have recipes uh, that you would like for us to try, uh, we love family recipes. We love hearing about recipes. How did they get started? Has this been passed down? We're big fans. Um, so um, if you have recipes that you would like for us to try on Walla in the new year, in 24, um, that's when the show moves to the supporter side. Um, so this year, when we start in about October, from October through December, almost every season we're making the same recipes. These are always going to be the Italian cookies. They're always pretty much going to be in the same um in the same order, like I said, based on how they freeze. Um, and hopefully they become recipes that you like and you can enjoy with your family. Um, but once we started moving, voila, to the supporter side and we started cooking twice a month, we decided to really kind of tap into our audience and uh, find out about recipes that you love. And so last year, Nicole, Nicole taught us... Um, it was the Filipino string beans, maybe? No, well, it, we put the string beans. Adobo. Chicken, chicken right. Chicken adobo. Chicken adobo. That was so good. Um, and so we we really got to, uh, you know, we had Steak Diane come on. We made Steak Diane. Um, and so there's so many great recipes. Um, pierogies we haven't done. Well, but it's an all-day event. But maybe Carrie, we can start doing them on Sundays. Um, These Nanami bars from Canada. Nanami. Nanami. Nanami bars. Judy's, Judy's frowning right now because I'm saying it wrong. Um, but if you have recipes you'd like us to try, you can go to onefunnymother.com, hit that community button, and again please submit your recipes. We'll look at them, uh, try them out. Sometimes they don't come out right, but that's part of the fun. Uh, but we do love hearing the stories. Oh, stuffed mushrooms. Marie, it's so funny you say that because I was just somewhere and they had, they had fried mushrooms. But I was just thinking, I would love a great recipe for a stuffed mushroom. I bet they're so yummy. You stuff them. Um, my mom was Norwegian. She always made a German cookie called Fuffernerser. <laughs> for nurser cookies really good janice send it in uh we would love to feature you and uh hear about the recipe i have a family recipe called vinegar pudding it's so delicious don't let the name fool you that sounds disgusting caitlin but please send it um belinda i was i started defrosting a spinach artichoke dip i thought but i don't see it Melanie said, what is the decanter you're looking Oh, I have to find a picture of it. I'll have to find it, Melanie. I'll try to show you tomorrow. I've never met stuffed. I've never made stuff sold now. Stuffed zucchini sounds amazing. Um, so all of it, uh, all of it sounds yummy. Yeah, we have to have the Pacheco sisters on making something. We got to learn something. Because girl, did I show you? My favorite thing is Mexican pizza. And I started making it. It's like the it's like the recipe that you can steal from Taco Bell and you fry up. Did we make it? I can't remember. Did we make did we make Mexican pizza live or oh, no? That was good. The Mexican pizza was good. It is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, portobello mushrooms with a crab mixture. Oh, Kathy, we all getting so hungry. So uh, be sure to go online and put your recipes in, and we will start making those twice a month on the supporter side. We'd love to have you. Um, meatless meatballs out of portobello mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I did make Mexican pizza. It was so good. I'm convinced no one is ever unhappy eating Mexican food. Girl, you're not wrong. <laughs> you are not right. I know. I'm so hungry now. Um, also, like I said, we are still looking for uh, people to send us a morning show intro. So um, because we only have some till Monday. After that, there's no more. So if you'd like, please make one. Um, I know those chicken cutlets. Those were so good, too. Um, so yeah. we have a lot of fun stuff. So, um, the recipe, you don't put any recipe on the non-supporter side. So all the recipes will always go on to the store page. So you'll see the recipes, but if you would like to watch voila moving forward, then we encourage you to become a supporter and you can see us cooking, uh, live, um, always oh, always left. Yeah. So we, so you can always see the recipes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Steph, uh, you can send direct emails to tech at one funny mother. Uh, but if you're uploading a recipe, upload it through, um, the website, one funny mother.com slash community. Um, but we always love to try new foods and Dye does a great job of making them gluten-free as well. Um, so that's always uh, super lovely. Um, um, eat maybe some recipes for the crock pot for the winter. You know, mm. in there and, and let it cook. Yeah, but I don't know how we would do that because that would take hours to cook. Uh, we would have to, we would have to make it in the morning and then taste it at night. So we're just eating. So it's just us eating. Eat it. Just okay. eat it. I like crock pot recipes. Well, like, maybe we could do it in the morning on the supporter side and be like, this is what this looks like. Tune in tonight to see how uh, it tastes. Right, right, because we do throw it right. You just got to put it all yeah. in there. Oh, good so, idea. Uh, so anyway, so we're cutting out a little bit early of Tipsy Tuesday, but we've been live for like an, almost two hours. So uh, hopefully you had a good night tonight. Let's hear for Diana. Let's see your biscotti one more time, Diana. Good. He's like, no, you're not going to see it. It's already in the freezer. Oh, you want um, to see it? Buddy. Yeah, let's see it. I thought you said hear it for the biscotti. No, there it is. It looks. Oh, look at this. Yummy. Look at this. Super yummy. Uh, also, if you haven't uh, ordered your calendar, you can pre-order those now. So you can go to onefunnymotherstore.com, check it out, get your uh, calendar ordered. Um, I know everyone's starving. Um, but I hope you had a good night. Hopefully you smiled a little bit. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in the morning. Tomorrow's Wednesday, girl. Hump day. Halfway through. So it's going to be great. Uh, but thanks for watching. Kudos to Diana for cooking our bourbon and biscotti night. It was a good night. Um, but thanks for watching, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning on One Friday Morning. Probably a little late. Okay.